How's it going everyone? It's me, Craig Mitch, and welcome to Spurverts Part 1. You know the show where we talk about everything that's got us absolutely excited to be Spurs fans. I'm, by, I'm joined by Reese James and Emma Story. And uh, we're going to kick it off with the Palace result. We won 3-1, yeah. uh, Deli Ali's goal. Oh. Amazing goal. Unbelievable goal. Oh. Goal of the season. Oh. Goal of the last 10 seasons. More words, more words to describe oh, it. More just so good. It was so good. I mean, the audacity <laughs> to even attempt it when it's one or we need a goal, it's the 83rd minute, 84th minute. Yeah. And he's just going, oh, I've done, just do this. One of it, my, didn't it didn't touch the ground. One of my favourite bits about it as well is, I don't know if you see, when he does that original turn and flick, you see Yednak come running towards him. And Yednak's getting ready to go for the ball and then all of a sudden the ball's over here somewhere and Yednak's literally like... No man's like, magic tricks what, just happened to what, him. What, what just happened? Like, oh God. Unbelievable. I've said this before, like everything that that boy ever does make me smile, but mm. oh. I love him. It's I interesting because um, <laughs> I was at the game. Yes, I was. I was at the Mace game. Changed. Yeah, courtesy of JD. Oh, yeah, in a days. box, mate. Man of the people. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, all right. Anyway, I was at the game and literally the medical staff was in front of me. And when Dele Alli scored that goal, I literally tapped one of the medical staff and I was like, well, class he is. Oh. He turned around and he was like, I know. Amazing. <laughs> and then Batonga got injured. What a surprise, mate. Uh, you're, distracting, oh, that was... <laughs> you're distracting our physios. I, I Are you going to point that to me now? We're <laughs> distracting the physios. Yeah. Flipping L for Connor, flipping L burning. All right, Reese. Hang on a minute. We'll talk about that in a minute. Can we just carry on talking about how amazing Danny is? But also, like, the context of that result was brilliant. There was no point. I don't know about mm. anybody else. When we went 1 0 down, I did not think to myself, we're not going to score. I didn't think to myself, oh my God, we're about no, to lose this I up. Agree. I really didn't. Yeah. And I think it's such a mark of how far we've come under Poch that it's no longer the attitude now that the heads drop when it, when something doesn't go our way. I mean, I think yeah. we've picked up more points from losing positions than any other team in the Premier League this season. That's mm. so unheard of for us. It's amazing the it kind is. of change of mentality. And yeah, I mean, God, when Harry equalised, you just thought, right, this is it, this is game on. Even yeah. without Delhi's then undisputed. But even tactically, Poch sent a message, didn't he? It's just like, take off a defensive player, yeah. put on Chadley. Put Dyer, put on Chadley. And, and even at first, I thought, oh, I, I, like, I agreed with Chadley coming on, but taking off Dyer. Taking off Dyer, you're like, Ooh. But then doing a straight swap, would it have made a difference? Uh, but we did get overrun a bit in midfield for a little bit. But then as soon as we got that goal, it was just... And Chadley, Chadley was, was actually the catalyst for the change, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Set up Harry Kane's header, Completely. scored a goal. And poor old Chadley, you've got to feel sorry for him. Yeah, he scored an absolute the, the, banger. The goal was an absolute, yeah, like a mm. banger, but because obviously it came with the same game as Deli yeah. Alley, so everyone's just like, oh yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's also, all right. That's all right. Chadley's really obviously good. been watching the channel because he kept it very casual for that finish. <laughs> he is so <laughs> casual, so <laughs> casual. That's, that's what he does, you know, he's just a casual guy. All right, so let's talk about Andros Townsend. Now, apparently a fee has been agreed for around 12 million with Newcastle. Yeah. How are we feeling? Finally off the books? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's sad. I always like to think that, you know, we can hold on to like one of our own and bring yeah. it through and keep it going. But it's been quite obvious for quite a long time that Townsend's just not in Poch's plans. He doesn't really fit in the system that we play, even before all that, you know, business with the fitness coach and everything. Yeah. Um, he has fair play to him. He's gone and played for the under 21s to keep his fitness up, to keep himself going. He scored a lot of goals for them, actually, yeah. while he's been playing. So I think it's, I think he needs a fresh start. I think we need a fresh start. I think 12 million is actually really good business. Um, I'm leave you, better leave you there. Better leave you there. Better leave you, leave you time. Because how much did they try and offer him initially? Oh god, like eight, seven or eight million, yeah, something like that. It was definitely, it was definitely also it double figures. So yeah. he's done but, a good one if it comes. He up. wanted more, didn't he? But supposedly reports are the Poch said, "I'll oh, let him go." Yeah, and I can understand that because Poch. Well, I think Poch is the kind of guy he wants players to do well full stop like and if, yeah. even if it's not at our club he wants them to go in and, and have a future oh it's because he beat up one of our staff you know <laughs> 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 Again, but, um, I just oh, said that no, it, it allegedly bad. allegedly there was, there was no, there's a little bit of this that's not big. He did as much to our medical staff as you did, mate. You tapped him on the shoulder. <laughs> no, you're putting me. Is it because we're both Rick Tracers? You're just putting us both in that box. Anyway, let's talk about. Oh god. Let's talk about Jan Vertonghen. Now, unfortunately, um, he's hurt himself, hasn't he? Yeah. He's really. Yeah, he's yeah. got injured. Yes, What's he the has. extent of the damage? I mean, the good news is, we think, um, it doesn't look like he's done his cruciate. So that means that long term, he's not going to be out forever and ever. This it's is not, not a season. ACL. Yeah, it's not, not a season ending injury. However, mm. worst case scenario, we're looking at a couple of months, which means he's not going to be back till April, which means he is going to miss, among other things, the derby, which, you know, is not a great thing. We've been so reliant on having that amazing spine and especially our little defensive setup, Hugo, the Belgian boys. Dyer and uh, Ali in the in the centre mid, so it's it's a bit of a blow. Mm. Having said that, luckily I don't know. It's almost like Poch saw this coming. Um, we have been bedding Vimmer in the last few games, which means he's not going to be coming in cold. He has looked decent, yeah. So I yeah. think this is a good opportunity for him to come in and take his chance. I think if we're all honest as well, like we'd much rather. I really hate to say this, but out of Toby and Jan of the partnership, mm. 
we'd rather that Jan had been the one who got injured rather than Toby. I'm just putting it Ooh, out there. Yeah. I think I agree with that. Also, I think Vimmer will slot in nicely. He's a left-sided centre-back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so he'll fit well. But if not, then, you know, Dyer can drop back there and then we can finally start... We can drop Ali and Dembele back centre-mid and finally yeah. Ericsson can play in the number 10 role. He's been I think, playing for ages. I mean, I think it's really nice that this hasn't provoked, like, an outright panic. I think if this happened, like, last year, then mm. Tottenham suddenly got injured, everyone would be like, oh, my God, we're so screwed. It's early in the season like as well. Now. Well, not early, but it's, it's halfway Relatively through. Early. You know, and could also, be worse. That, that said, if Kane or Lloris gets injured, I will think it's the beginning of the end. Well, yeah, but, you know, let's not... Hey, let's not tempt any fate. Now. He's out of the black <laughs> He is, this is true. He's out of the black book, you know. I mean, he's not Lloris, but he's out of the black book. No, he is doing well. So, no, it's not an unmitigated disaster. It's a blow, but let's face it, we've been pretty lucky with injuries so far this season. It was always going to happen at some point. It's a shame that it's Jan. Fingers crossed. It could be, in fairness, he could be on the lighter side of the injury. Could be back within like three weeks. They're saying a, a MCL could be about two months, six to eight weeks. Yeah. Maybe. It kind of depends how serious. I mean, I had one. I had one before, and I, I did two weeks. I mean, what can I say? I'm Superman. He's supposed to be Super Jan. He so is really Super and Jan. truly, he should come back. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. not like Connor had kryptonite in his elbow. You know, come back, <laughs> Super Jan. You could do it. Come back. We well, need you. If you're fit, mate, why don't you get on the pitch? I'm, I'm, they might have to me yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know That's the medical staff now. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah, got yeah, bros exactly. there. Come you know, on, guys. We're, my not, way we're in. not that desperate yet. Yeah. Anyway, guys, this has been part one of Spurred Up. So let us know in the comments below what you thought of the topics we've discussed. Uh, follow us on Twitter, at Spurred on TV. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. And we'll catch you in part two. Keep it casual. Hello everyone, welcome to Spurverts part two. I'm Rhys James, I'm here with Craig and Emma. Uh, now we are talking about the training camp in Barcelona, right? The team have gone to Barcelona for a bloody jolly. Nice. Um, 